right into space. So, Alan, what do you think of the initiative to measure well-being? Uh, I think it's very necessary. I think it's a very wise attempt to nuance how we assess the performance of nations. Mm -hmm. um, it's always the question, how do you do it properly? Mm. Most people would say, it's a good idea, but can it be done? And I think today is all about figuring out if it can. I think we can certainly make progress. What we measure affects what we do, and if our measurements are flawed, decision, decisions may be distorted. And that's the key point. When, famously, the GDP measures were constructed as part of the Keynesian revolution in the 30s and 40s, Simon Kuznet said, the welfare of a nation can scarcely be inferred from a measurement of national income as defined by the GDP. But we have ended up, ended up politicians, policy makers, experts, trapped in the GDP model. And if we're going to break free from the GDP model, we need some other measurements that rival the GDP. Uh, and that's why uh, the British government, David Cameron, Prime Minister in the coalition government in which I serve, has asked the Office of National Statistics to develop indicators to measure well-being. One of the other problems I understand is if you ask people how they feel on a range from 0 to 10, by and large we rather phlegmatic, stoic Brits tend to say about 7. And uh, the thing about it, because it's, you feel reasonable, you don't claim you're too happy, that's why it's showing off and being outrageous. <laughs> You are rather inhibited about admitting if you really are feeling miserable, so about seven. And uh, trying to break the national perception of well-being from about seven into something a little bit richer and more diverse is a challenge for these statisticians of the ONS, and we sure they're going to rise to it. Now, um, obviously there are many ways of measuring happiness. There are those kind of general questions about your life that I've mentioned already. Uh, actually, life satisfaction and happens uh, have very similar patterns of explanatory variables with, with, with very similar weight. Another strand, if again, is this more Aristotelian, uh, so-called Aristotelian approach, uh, where you say um, enjoying life is not uh, enough, there's got to be meaning, and so on. Um, and we should certainly explore, and I know the owners are planning to explore, uh, all of these measures and again, compare them in terms of their determinants, because in the end, of course, what's important is what determines the extent. If I was asked to pick one of these measures, I would definitely pick life satisfaction that have been studied uh, for so long, and we know a lot about it already. Um, and we can also link it to uh, the different domains of a person's life, their family, their work, their community, uh, their health, and so on. For, for each of which there's a different, <coughs> different go government department that ties in well with the, the policy agenda. The exact question is we're going to ask, we haven't yet announced. We've got a technical group of all sorts of experts having one or two more meetings before we confirm that. But probably there will be a question about life satisfaction. There will, <coughs> there will be a question I would say positive affect, and that will probably translate as whether we're happy or happiness. And there will probably be a question about negative affect, i.e. how miserable are you, how worried are you, so you go for the bottom of this is lots of happiness and very little misery. But actually the same person might say, I'm up and down all the time, I'm very high on birth. They're, they're not opposites, they, they coexist. Um, and probably a, a question about how worthwhile people feel their lives or their activities. Uh, and we think those are four different things, and the combination of them is worth understanding and seeing the relationship between them rather than pitching a single one. One of my intellectual quarrels a bit with Richard Lale and Michael <coughs> Dolan is they tend to say it's important to measure happiness, which is fun for them to say, and by happiness, what we mean is all of the four things I just talked about. And I think they're not all, they're not all the same. Happiness is one of them. But it's, 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 I think, distorting, and I agree with you about the newspapers, it's distorting to wrap the whole thing up as though the whole thing is happiness. I think life satisfaction probably gives more meaningful results in the longer term, is not susceptible to a sunny day in the world and things like that. Um, 
But let, let's see. I don't know if you can even get the data and analyze it before you <coughs> assure you know what it means. I have some problems in the well-being agenda is defined by someone like uh, Richard Layard, though I very much respect what he's doing. I think that the attempt to create a, a well-being index or a happiness index and asking people to respond on what ultimately is quite a narrow questionnaire um, is not going to lead to rich enough data for policy decisions. And very importantly, it's going to seriously upset the media. We live in, in a democracy. And any discussion of well-being has to bear in mind how this is going to play out to the gallery. There's no point doing this unless you can carry people with you. And talking about happiness and well-being loses too many people. There's already good evidence for that. So if you're interested in this issue and you're interested in making a change, you can't deny that there's a problem. There's been, there's been a, a massive outflow of research on, on, on well-being and happiness and you know, I think it's great that we're putting the measures into those data sets. I can't, you know, I'm no longer in a position to do analysis of those data sets, but I would love to. I think there's going to be huge richness there and, and a wonderful, it's a wonderful opportunity. I think it's fantastic. Um, but you know, that's, that could be done by ONS on the basis of a research council support. Um, I don't understand why the Prime Minister is making public spending commitments to invest in this particular area of research as opposed to other areas of research. We have the Economic Research Council and other research councils that decide where we will invest our money on the research side. We're losing the citizenship study and a whole range of other data sets. We're losing local data collection to actually know what is happening at local level in relation to a whole range of, of, of features of, of, of the national economy and, and society. And in exchange, we're getting this investment in well-being. Um, and I, I, I remain uh, concerned that this is being led politically. Um, and and, and these, are, these are politically led investments. Um, and and I, I just want to understand better what, what the agenda is, because you know, we could make these investments in the research and the data and encourage a national conversation about well-being and happiness. <coughs> and that might be all that happens, that we get you know, uh, maps of, well, we get crime maps already, and we have all kinds of maps which will drive, you know, transparency is good, information is good, people should know who's happy where and what happiness means to different people, and, and all these things are great. But we can have that national conversation now. You know, we've got all this, we've got a lot of data. Um, I don't see a lot of it being discussed on, you know, having more data, maybe we discuss more on TV, and we'll have this national conversation. But nonetheless, this was led by the Prime Minister. I think it's a sort of uh, laudable goal. I mean, I think people are aware that you know, it's more so, more so life to make money. Everyone kind of buys that. But at the same time, there are real credibility problems about measuring something as subjective as well-being or happiness. Uh, the challenge is to make objective what is inherently subjective. And I think where it gets more interesting is where you try and flip, flip, some, flip things and, and sort of try to individuals to get a better sort of objective grasp of their own subjectivity. And that includes sort of raising awareness about these issues, disseminating more widely, what concerns me slightly about this initiative, and it was captured by a question by um, you know, Feinstein earlier, is the politics of this. Because uh, once you get national metrics of well-being, they will inevitably be contested. There's no uncontested measure of well-being. And then there's a question of how people use that to hold the government to account. So on the one hand, there are people saying, this is not really happening, this, is not really, this doesn't really speak to what makes life matter to me. Mm. But on the other hand, you get people saying, look, you said you would make us happier, but your own measures is not happening. Right. So it's, it's going to make things very messy. Mm. Uh, but I think, in general, the sort of path towards progress is always messy. Mm. And we're at a very nascent stage of this process. Mm -hmm. Um, I, just hope, I just hope it's not too dominated by statistics. I think the discourse needs a healthy balance of getting the right data and the right measures with insights about, you know, much more subjective narrative personal insights. All my cares just drift right into space.